Hello, Arixion. Good to see you. And thank you for the resub. You have now been subscribed for 19 months in total, for which I'm very glad. I may as well um, do my introduction now. Hello, everyone. It's me, Doomlink, and welcome back to the Doomlink's Life Hunt series. We are indeed in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. As I have expressed in the past, there is a likelihood, well, not a likelihood, but a possibility that I will be playing 3 Ultimate at some point in this recording as well. That depends on two factors, the first being whether or not there are people to play with in 4 Ultimate, and the second being whether or not there are people to play with in 3 Ultimate. I'm not going to change games if I have options within 4 Ultimate, or, but no, I don't even agree with that, do I? No, do you know what? I've made a decision just now, and I'm going to explain it. So, imagine I'm in a situation where... I start this live stream. In fact, we can use this room as an example. If I am in this room, uninterrupted, from now until two hours from now, I'm not going to be playing 3 Ultimate. Why is that? It's because I have no reason at that stage to go looking for a different group to play with. But if this room collapses at some point between now and two hours from now, that will necessitate the search for another room which at that stage may cause me to go and play 3 Ultimate if there are people playing 3 Ultimate. Hopefully that has made the situation clear. I completely failed to actually change my loadout whilst going to the... Uh, what do you even call it? Your room, I guess you can call it. Your house. But that's alright, life goes on. Now... In terms of element, no, let's not even worry about the elemental weaknesses of those monsters. I think I'll just use something general use, such as this loadout here. Do I have a more fun greatsword to use? I'm not opposed to this greatsword, and I don't think it's boring to use. I do want to fully upgrade the veined grave blade. I do want to make that very clear. That's something that I need to get to the veined grizz blade. I'm just waiting on a dire blast heart to finally drop. Um, something more fun would be great. Teostra del Sol, that would be one such example. I do find that to be a more fun weapon to use than the Serra Symmetry. It's just that I use that weapon in 3 Ultimate and in Freedom Unite, so I'm getting a little bit sick of it. Alright. Just selecting my food, which you can't see in full detail because I'm only recording the top screen at the moment, but... Hopefully you can forgive me for not sharing all the details with you. Do you know what? I'm going to reposition my webcam. I'm not happy with it. I want it to be more straight on. There we go. That's better. It was just coming at me from a side angle, and I just wasn't happy with it. Where possible, I want to avoid the side angles. Uh, Simply Rome is screaming my name in the chat. But yeah. Hello, Peaberry, and hello, Simply Rome. There's my controller. My controller is hiding behind my phone that I'm using to monitor chats. These guys are looking really patient, actually. I mean, you could interpret that as impatience because they're standing around me, staring at me, but maybe they're just in awe of my presence. So I'm not going to assume that they were in any way trying to pressure me to ready up on the quest. Usually that manifests itself in a different way. You would have one person, so we've got three people, one guy would be readied up, and then repeatedly unreadying up, and then readying up again to just keep that bell sound going, and then the other guy would be either walking around in a circle furiously, running back and forth furiously, or um, riding my ass without pause. So I don't think that scenario was in any way indicative of an impatient team. In fact, I'd say I'd hazard the guess that um, they were actually very patient. Now, I think we will have the opportunity to use the Fence Switch. That's one of the differences between an Arena Hunt here in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and, say, an Arena Hunt in 3 Ultimate. Just to use a, an example that I feel... Oh, well, we don't have the option of using the Fence Switch in this hunt. And to be honest, I'm not that surprised. These monsters are not very strong, so... 
I don't know why it was necessary to paintball the one that we're fighting, considering that they are very visually different from one another. I absolutely agree with the idea of paintballing one specific monster if you're fighting, like, two of the same, so that way you can keep track of the same one. To ensure that you're reducing the duration of time spent fighting two monsters at once by actually focusing on one. But that is not necessary here. <laughs> but that's just me. I'm assuming this is G-rank level, although I'm not certain. I don't think you can actually pick a quest from a quest giver in the Elder Hall that's below G-rank level. In fact, I'm certain of it. I don't know why I was beginning that sentence, and in fact, completed the sentence with the implication of uncertainty. I'm absolutely certain that you can't do that, so... Um, it's definitely G-Rank. I think that's a good thing, to be honest, that I don't have to sit here and wonder. That would be a rather obscure and perhaps unconvincing benefit to actually having two separate halls for G-Rank quests and non-G-Rank quests. Just waiting for you to perhaps stay in one place. I can see that uh, Chaozu registered his desire to keep the monster in one place by placing a trap, and he got in the trap almost immediately. I feel like my commentary was out of time with the events as they were unfolding there, but I'm sure, I'm sure you wouldn't hold it against me. That explosion, I think, will also hurt the other Tetsukamra. Probably quite considerably. What do I think about the Gemran ecology video? Um, I assume that it, there's not a new one, and you're talking about the original one from Monster Hunter Tri, which I don't remember very clearly, actually. If there was one, I don't remember it. There were a small handful of ecology videos back in Monster Hunter Tri, and I think the only one that I can remember very clearly was the Kurapeko one, just because of how much higher resolution he was in that video, as compared to the in-game version. His fur, like, the detail on his fur was much more vibrant, and, well, I shouldn't say vibrant. Vibrant almost um, can only be applied to colour in this context. So I would say just more detailed when it came to the fur. Um, the legs that I'm using are also Morales. So, ironic that the headpiece looks terribly ridiculous and negatively impacts the visual appearance of the armor set. The legs actually, apparently, look quite good according to Peaberry. I'm just going to make sure that everything is fine with the live stream. I'm happy with the volume of it. Yeah, there's really not much that I have to do to to set things up here. Because the last game that I recorded was a 3DS Monster Hunter game. That is indeed one of the benefits of almost exclusively doing Monster Hunter recordings. It just means that I have to... or rather I am not required to mess around in OBS quite as much to get things organised. Whereas if I were playing a completely different game on a completely different game system, that would <laughs> obviously require a, a lot more setup time. I'm feeling a bit slow today. Consider this a warm-up hunt. I'm sure I'll be faster next time. That's one of the things with Greatsword. Because it is such a low mobility weapon type and because it is so slow, you as the hunter have to actually make up for that um, inherent slowness of the weapon with your own speedy reaction time. And I would not describe myself as speedy today. <laughs> Um, Potato is letting us know that he's just watched Geo Walkers. I don't know what the hell that is, but apparently it's a terrible movie. According to him, always happy to be updated on whatever Potato is doing when he joins the chat. It's a bit like A-Gaming. A-Gaming does that. He'll let me know what game he's playing when he joins the live stream. Not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe I would have something to say about said game. Oh, and we've got a dead... Berserk Tetsukabra. Again, you could see that that fight wasn't 
crushingly difficult despite the fact that we couldn't use the fence switch, and so therefore I'd say that's why the fence switch isn't even an option. It's because it's not needed. It would trivialize the fight a little too much if we had that ability. But yeah, the fence switch I think is a good implementation. It sort of recognizes, I think, that um, hunters want to separate two monsters in the arena. So instead of forcing people to use smoke bombs, they actually include it in the arena. Um, some people might see that as a form of streamlining, and I suppose that if you were to make that argument, you would be correct. I don't think all streamlining is bad. I think streamlining can be thoughtful and beneficial. But, yeah. Like an example of streamlining that really works in Monster Hunter, in my opinion, is taking people away from third-party references and instead including the information in the game itself. That's something that I don't dislike at all about Monster Hunter World, where as you increase your familiarity with the monster through having fought it several times, you start to get more and more information from that monster. That is an excellent implementation. That is something that should be encouraged in Monster Hunter. I don't have a problem with checking references like Ping's decks and Kiraniko, etc., but it shouldn't be required of the hunter to do that. You know, I think most of the information that you need should be in-house. It should be in the game itself. So those sort of improvements are not negative at all. So I'm just mentioning that because when I talk about the streamlining of Monster Hunter, that is not a blanket statement that refers to all streamlining. What it refers to is the general direction that the game is going in and the extent to the streamlining, not um, the concept of streamlining in general. It does exist in the series, has pretty much existed since 3rd gen in a tangible way, and it's not necessarily negative. <sighs> um, we did have a fourth hunter very briefly, but I think he's left now. I didn't get the chance to see if he was actually playing for ultimate or not. <sighs> Seems that Simply Roam is on a seven stream streak. Um, I presume that that's a new feature in Twitch because surely a good number of you have caught all of my streams back to back um, for some time. But for the first time, it's actually giving us stats on that. So Simply Roam apparently has now watched seven streams in a row, which is pretty good. If it's not a new feature and Simply Roam is just really special, then fair enough. <laughs> Don't want to dismiss that possibility. Big Bellied Bruises. I don't know if this is an event quest or what. I don't think that this is part of the regular G1 quest list, but it does have a requirement of G1. Or I could be entirely incorrect and it's indeed part of that G1 quest list. When I pose something to you as a possibility, I really want you to not take it as a categorical statement because it's obviously not that. You know, just because I have the impression of something doesn't mean that it is reality. I might be better placed to make these assumptions as compared to other people, some other people, no one specifically, but it certainly means that if I think I might be wrong, <laughs> I might actually be wrong, so remember that. And then also remember that even if I speak with immense certainty. There is still the statistical possibility that I'm wrong. We need these, uh, we need a healthy understanding of that. I am indeed fallible and I am indeed human. Um, Gunlands maybe? So what was it? It was Kongalala and some other fucking monster. Let's just use the poison Gunlands. The uh, Shimmering Tiamat, I believe it's called. Pretty cool weapon. You may notice that my vocal audio is a bit louder than usual. This is really what I prefer it to be at. I, I want to avoid... Well, actually, I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of my setup. Because it's not interesting. Your eyes start to glaze over, you're like, Doom Link, I don't care. At least if I'm on the subject for more than three minutes. I suppose what I would say, in summary, is... 
I don't want to be so loud that it starts to have a, um, a deleterious effect on the sound quality or the fidelity of my microphone. That would probably be more a result of the um, compressor plugin that I'm using more than anything else, not so much digital distortion, although you could possibly suggest that it is um, resulting in transient, um, well, transients in general, but um, yeah, it's more, but I also want it to be loud, I want it to be as loud as it can be, I don't want to be just peaking at negative 6 dB, I want to go a bit higher than that on the dB scale. Oh, okay. Apparently Simply Rome actually got the same microphone I was getting. He he was surprised to find that the Electra Voice RE20 was as expensive as it was. It's because it's a professional broadcast microphone. That's why. The reason why I got the RE20 is because I had experience of using it in a studio setting and decided that it would be good for my kind of voice. It's good for lower frequency sources. Um, it, like as an instrument microphone, it's often used as a bass drum microphone, and it's often used in, in radio as well, for the kind of voice that I have. So that's why I chose this microphone. I actually got this microphone back in 2017, so it has been with me for seven years now. But of course, with a professional broadcast microphone, you can expect, you know, decades of longevity. Obviously with a little bit of upkeep, particularly with an RE20, um, you will be wanting to change the foam every, I'd say, 10 years or so. The precursor to this microphone, I think, was the PL20, which was manufactured early to mid 70s and then by I think the or it could have been the 60s even late 60s but I think by the mid 70s the RE20 was the uh, definitive version of this microphone largely unchanged since then I believe all right so we're not doing too well in this fight I'm going to be honest with you you will have noticed that I did change targets. The reason why was because we did have the Kongalala fall on the ground. So... I feel like I can't really commit to anything. I shouldn't have used a gun lance for this fight. I didn't actually clock the fact that we were in a, we were in addition to fighting the Kongalala, fighting the Tiger Stripe Zamtrios. I would not normally choose this weapon for that fire. And he's got his eye on me. I'm just going to do the best combo that I can. <laughs> I knew that I was about to get hit by him, but I was... Oh. I thought I still had my weapon out. That's why I... Um, almost ran towards him. I was actually running towards him and then intending to shield. Let me just do a wyvern fire on this prick. Sorry if I hit you. Well, professional broadcasting microphones have become a little bit more common in the... well, on the internet. And part of the reason why was because... Inevitably, you've got people making actual money while doing this now. It wasn't as common in the past, and it actually didn't exist at all for people playing video games, say, 10 plus years ago. But again, with the lucrative nature of that business now on the internet, more people are using broadcast level microphones. The Shure SM7B, for one reason or another, is the, um, the toast of the town when it comes to that. It is considered to be... You know, the microphone that everybody wants. It's really... I don't really like it compared to this microphone. I find the RE20 to be the better choice, not just for my voice, but generally speaking. I don't like the sound of the SM7B as much. Um, I did want an SM7 a long time ago, but, you know... Now I find it slightly less attractive as a prospect now that everyone's using one. Um... 
It's just nicer to have a dynamic microphone in general because you don't have to worry so much about, um, you know, the... Like, if you've got a table mounted for example, Oh, for fuck's sake, stop it. The dynamic microphones are usually end address as opposed to side address. That refers to the position of the diaphragm in relation to the source. Or I shouldn't even say in relation to the source. Basically, the position of the diaphragm on the microphone itself. You can see that this is, you know, a... Um, I'm really getting sick of being attacked by this stupid monkey. And in fact, we're performing terribly in this quest. Um, basically, I can have the microphone relatively far. Like, the beginning of the microphone is away from me. I can point it in the direction of my mouth. And for me, that is less obstructive. If I were to use, say, a side address condenser microphone, I'd be looking at, you know, a much more awkward positioning of the microphone, in my opinion. That's why you'll typically... That's why I think, as a broadcast microphone, the SM7B, for example, being one of the most popular dynamic microphones out there is so ubiquitous in its use. <sighs> the problem with this gun lance is I feel like as soon as I pull it out I'm going to be in danger. <laughs> I don't think I've even been able to attack consistently enough to get a poison off on any of these monsters. Which is awkward. But yeah, if I had prepared better, we'd probably already be done with this quest, to be honest with you. I hate how much ground he can cover with that jumping slam attack that he does. That's one of the problems with this inflatable fucking pool toy of a monster. The actual size of his hitbox. Or I guess you can say just the... The area that he covers with an attack. Because he's inflated and a fucking jumping, bouncing ball of a monster. He is, honestly, a bit challenging. I've always found him to be challenging. Depends what your loadout is, though. If you're using ranged, say, pierce gun, that's not a problem at all. You do have to be evading all the time in order to not be hit, but it's still very annoying. So we do actually, well, we did briefly have a fourth person. Oh, never mind. It's, okay, it's a guy named Lapel. It's not the same guy as last time. We've had him join, leave, join, and then leave again. So I'm going to assume that he is having connectivity issues. Which you do get with some people occasionally. I, I don't see what causes it personally. I think it's just really bad internet on their side. So you've got people who can't even join the Citra room, much less the game, the in-game session without disconnecting for some reason. Um, ironically, just as I said the word disconnecting, my HDMI cable between my computer and my monitor here lost connection, which was really annoying. I wonder if that was actually on the stream itself. I think that was just on my display, not actually. No, it was just on my display because now that I think about it, my computer did stay on, so. Yeah. Incidentally, it's very difficult to continue playing the game when you're staring at a black screen. Yeah, this lapel guy keeps trying to join and then immediately disconnects, so he's got a terrible internet connection. Even if he were able to successfully get into the online session, he would be 
disconnecting almost immediately. There is no way, in my opinion, that he would be able to last a full hunt. You do see some people who try to play these games and their connectivity is just so bad that you almost have to commend them for their... Um, what's the word? Just had a mental blank. I was expecting to immediately have recall on that word and it just didn't come. Um, they've got a persistent spirit. The way that they can just keep trying and trying and trying again to connect when really it should just be something that works and that you don't even have to think about. So it's a terrible experience for them to have, but at the end of the day, when you don't have an issue with the connectivity of the game, it just doesn't feel worth it to accommodate people like that. Because I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're doing the key quests of a person who can barely stay connected to a hunt. It's really quite miserable because you're departing on a quest that, the, that they may not even benefit from because they will disconnect before they can actually complete it. And obviously disconnect before it is reasonable for them to solo it as well. So it's, it's a shit experience. I've done it before. I wouldn't encourage it. It almost feels like you're having to share their misery when it comes to their poor connectivity. And to be honest with you, I don't want to share that misery. Earlier episodes of Live Hunts, there's a hissing. Um, that hissing that you're talking about is very interesting. So... I don't think I'm going to have that issue here, although I'm not sure yet. But that hissing that you're hearing is actually cicadas in the background. Now, not only... well, it's not so much the frequency, it's more like the amplitude of it. That hissing sound is pretty much the best um, compromise that I could make. So when I have really, really loud cicadas in the background, which is what I was having not at my previous residence, but at the residence before that, they were so loud that to actually EQ them out would have really negatively affected the sound quality of my voice. So basically I had to to find a happy medium between having a little bit of that background noise but also having decent audio quality. Because that's the thing, if you've got a really, really loud frequency that you want to cut, that amplitude is just going to necessitate the destruction of the actual source, or the fidelity of the source, to actually completely cut that unwanted frequency out. Um, unless it's a really, really focused frequency, but sadly the... Uh, the position within the frequency spectrum of that sound was a little bit too close to the frequency um, band of my voice, so... Yeah, really annoying. You shouldn't hear that anymore. Basically, it was only during the summer months, and it was it was annoying, but I just tried to soldier on, basically. I don't like the fact that we're doing this quest again, but let's just do it. I actually don't know what we're getting out of this. I can see that it is an event quest. We're getting something, some sort of drum item, and yeah. I might try to find out what it is. In fact, do you know what? Let's just get Ping's decks up. I want to find out. Because if they're trying to make it, I may as well try to make it as well. Uh, not share X, that's different. Ping's decks. Well, it doesn't come up like that anyway. Um, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate decks. Item. I'm just going to type in drum, because that's all I saw. Yep. Festival drum music. The weapon is Hunter Master. It is a hunting horn. I will actually bring the Pierce Bogan. Heavy Pierce. Uh, Chaotzu has disconnected from the room. Looks like an unintentional disconnect. Is it insane? Okay, let's find out. Hunter Master. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a very... Uh, this is one that I have been able to make for a little... No, I haven't been able to make it for a while. I recognise it. I've seen it before, where the actual notes change their appearance like that. 
it's quite funny looking. I don't know if I first saw it in a different Japanese version of Monster Hunter, but I seem to remember that when this was first introduced, it was Japanese only. Oh, you've actually got the animated face on the other side. Um, this is a reference to, I think, a rhythm game from Japan. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry, I don't remember anymore. But it was a rhythm game. Like a drum rhythm, rhythm game. Um, Peaberry, that sort of list of melodies is kind of standard. Um, what would be considered insane is if you had attack boost large, defense boost large, and in addition to that, um, earplugs. That would be incredible. But this list is pretty similar to other hunting horns that I already have, actually. Taiko no Tatsujin. What are you talking about, then? Do you mean... Oh, I see. Maybe that's the uh, Japanese name of that hunting horn. Because the quest that we're actually doing is Taiko. So, it's got Taiko and then... Oh, you're talking about the name of the game that I was talking about. Sorry. This is what happens when I don't keep track of the things that are actually coming out of my mouth. So yeah, the game is called Taiko no Tatsujin, yeah. Alright, let's... Um, bring some ammunition. I shouldn't need more than that. I'm just going to absolutely unload on the Tiger Stripes Amtrios because he is one of two monsters in the quest. I should be able to dispatch him quickly and then those guys can hopefully focus on the Kongalala. I'd like to let them know to focus on the Kongalala and I may do so in the Citra chat. But there is every likelihood that they won't read it. Mm, great connectivity, black screen. <laughs> I haven't actually had it get stuck on a black screen or anything like that. If I had experienced that in the past, I probably would have been shitting myself in that moment. Expecting that that is what had happened. Or suspecting that that is what had happened. Hello, Tiger Stripes Amtrios. I'm going to lock you down now. No, I'm not, because apparently I am within range of your roar. But yeah, the mobility of my loadout. Yeah, you can see that Chiaotzu did not read the chat. That's alright. I didn't expect them to read it anyway. The point is that I can solo this thing really quickly here. So it would be better for the sake of completing the quest quickly to have them focus on the Kongalala to have that one killed around the same time that I kill this monster. But this is actually working out somewhat, because the Kongalala is really on the edge of the area there. And is unlikely to actually see us for some time. Chaozu is pinned. Oh, fuck's sake. If you could stop doing that so often, it would be very much appreciated. Fuck this monster. Nope. Oh. Not good. You can see that almost every single time that I decide to reload my gun, I choose a really terrible time to do it. I got really close to getting hit by that water beam though. Sadly, Pierce level 3 does take some time to reload. I feel like I would be in a better rhythm 
if it were just me and the Tiger Stripe Zamtrius and those guys were fighting the Kongalala, but whatever. He did a double roll attack, though. Get out of my goddamn way, you piece of monkey shit. <laughs> so yeah, the Kongalala has basically full health at this point, so... That frustrates me when I think about it, but whatever. Go away. We have another fourth person. And they left immediately. I don't know what's going on with them. Now, my PS ammunition here is not going to be as effective against the Kongalala as compared to the Tiger Stripes Amtrios, because of course I can't get all of my piercings through this smaller body. But, um... Life goes on, I guess. Hopefully if we can all unload on this monster, in my case literally unload on this monster, he will die very quickly. If I can get him straight on, I think all of my piercings do actually get through his body. Don't mount. Please don't fucking mount. Like, to be honest, the health of this monster is actually going to cause the whole hunt to slow down if you successfully mount him. Because it would be faster for us to unload on him whilst flinching him in place rather than just standing around waiting for a mount to conclude. Oh, terrible critical distance. Oh, he's got Poison Breath as well. It depends on the mushroom that he consumes, I believe. But maybe when he doesn't have a mushroom, he just breathes all of it. But, you know, if he breathes a Nitro Shroom, he'll end up breathing Blast. Or, no, possibly Fire. Um, and then, obviously, if he eats a Toadstool, he'll be breathing the Poison Breath. I assume that I'm correct about that. If he doesn't have a mushroom to eat, because it's the Arena, for example... He's just going to breathe whatever he wants. His standard breath, I'm quite sure, is stench. Yeah, stench by default. I have not seen Paralysis Breath. You would assume so, based on there being parish rooms, but... I've never seen him do a Paralysis Breath. Maybe that's deemed to be a little too effective for a Kongalala. Yeah, I wish I could show you just how many people have attempted to connect to this room, but have failed. Well, I guess not the number of people, like individual people, but the number of attempted connections has been quite funny. I don't know if this is... A bad room for some people to connect to, but we're not having any issues. Admittedly, Chalsu did disconnect before, but maybe he did that intentionally. For example, if a person wants to go to... Um, what's it called again? Is it Sunsnug Island? Well, there is a particular location in this game that requires you to go offline in order to access it. And, yeah, there's every likelihood that he went there. And that's why he had disconnected. Um, the room's not limited to three players, no. Alright. Yeah, I don't think I've seen Emerald Kongalala do a Paralysis Breath either. If it's something that I had seen, I don't think I would forget it. These guys should have enough tickets now. I think you only require three for the hunting horn. I may as well forge it. The materials that are required for it are quite frankly not materials that I need to keep in my inventory. In other words, I don't need to save them for something else. Hmm. 
I'm surprised that I don't actually have this hunting horn. I thought I did have it. Or perhaps I had one similar at some point. I don't know. It's so familiar to me, this hunting horn. But, yeah, it's not a good one. I'm sorry. The, the stats of it are shit. I don't have an Awaken hunting horn set, and I'm not going to make one to use this hunting horn. And I've got much better fire hunting horns than this. Um, sure, you've got the funny faces for the notes, but it's just not worth it. I'll forge it just so that I have it, but it's not good. Yeah. Let's see what they've posted this time. If it's the same fucking quest again, I might lose my mind. <laughs> but, anyway. It is not. It is... Camellios in the Battle Quarters. Which is, by the way, the... Um, the old town... Of the second gen games. Notably, Monster Hunter DOS. I think that's correct. Well, let's just say Freedom 2, just in case I'm wrong about that. Camellios. What would be a fun weapon to use against him? Do you know what? I shall revert to the chat. Suggest a weapon time for me to use and I will use it. Dual blades. Okay. We've had a request to cut the tail, so do you know what? Dual Blades is actually perfect. It is the best choice for cutting the tail, and I will tell you why. The Dual Blades, I suppose the other good choice would be the Switch Axe in Sword Mode. But the way that those two weapons have an attack in common has to do with the accuracy of said attack. So if I'm doing the vertical slice with the Charge Blade Sword Mode, sorry. Yeah, that's correct. Charge Blade Sword Mode that's going to attack the same point every single time. Now, if I do a demon dance with the dual blades, the same applies. So dual blades is an excellent choice for this. I'll bring my... Maybe my elemental set? I don't know. What would be better? Let's bring this. And then... I don't know. This weapon, I almost regret making it. It's... Really quite stupid. I don't see a benefit in using it. It, I suppose it would be fun against a Rathalos or something, but... Uh. Oh yes, these dual blades are very good. This is a uh, relic weapon. I'm not a fan of using the Baryoth um, weapon design to have dragon dual blades. I'm really not a fan of that aspect of it, but... It's hard to ignore the stats of it. So cutting the tail of a Camellius in this game is much harder as compared to a second gen game. In second gen, you don't have to deal too much damage to the tail to cut it off, but what you do need to do is have the health of the Camellius reach a certain threshold before it will pop off. If you have dealed the required amount of damage to the tail, which as I say isn't all that much, once the Camellius reaches a certain point in its health, it will pop off automatically. In this game, it does have a very high level of HP. As I recall, as far as, you know, a tail that can be severed, it has the highest HP value out of any severable tail. I don't know how much it is, but um, it's a lot. I think it's determined by percentage of total health. Um, Whatever that figure is, it's highest for the Camellio's tail. We'll see how we go. It's a tall order to cut the tail of a Camellio's. I don't know if we can actually get a successful Dragonator here, so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I think he's too short for the Dragonator. I do actually want to make a Dual Blades armor set. Something with stamina skills. I'll do it at some point. This set is definitely appropriate for now. It's just for this particular game. 
how I approached it was instead to make elemental and status sets for dual blades, etc. Whereas, for example, in Portable Third and Generations Ultimate, I made sets that were specific to the dual blades insofar as the stamina consumption of the dual blades was concerned, so I would have skills on my armor set to actually address that. Trying to get that flinch on the back legs, which is essential. That's why I'm aiming for the back legs here. I would be honestly wasting my time to try and magnetize myself to that tail. It moves around too much, and too many of my attacks would be hitting the big part of the tail. It is only the curled up part at the back that is going to contribute to the severing of the tail. So what I'm aiming for here is proper flinches from the back legs. See, this is the thing. If I'm going to make an armor set that is geared towards the dual blades, I'm not actually going to gear it towards the consumption of dash juice. I don't agree with that. I would have either... Well, you know, I'll look through what skills would be appropriate, but... It's the... Uh, I think Marathon Runner is what it's called. It's the one that reduces the amount of stamina that is consumed by... Um, things that continuously drain your stamina. So those are the two stamina skills that exist. It is the ones that continuously drain stamina, and then the ones that um, affect skills that consume stamina all in one go. So Dual Blades Demonized Mode would be an example of continuous consumption, and then Evading would be an example of instantaneous consumption. So I would choose the former, which I believe is called Marathon Runner. That is what I would use for this set. So fortunately, you don't have to actually wait until the Camellios reaches a certain level of health in this game before the tail comes off. I think that's just viewed to be a little bit too archaic for this game, so... They just make it so it's a really high health threshold. Possibly they wanted to have a similar experience here. Where the tail is likely to come off towards the end of the fight with the Camellias, but they did it in a different way. They made it so that um, you actually just have to deal a shitload of damage to it. Which I can respect. I think that's okay. A reasonable change. I might sharpen up. I think I have speed sharpening. I do. Speed sharpening is another thing that I would add to the set. Elatrion weapons in portable third. Um, I like them. What I don't like is people who use Elatrion weapons just as a general use damage weapon. They are so strong, and the same can be said of Zenoga weapons in portable third. They're so much stronger than other weapons that if you were to have either a Zenoga weapon or an Elatrion weapon, quite frankly, the elemental weakness of the monster you're fighting becomes irrelevant. You just use an Elatrion weapon with Dragon or a Zenoga weapon with Thunder, and the raw damage of the weapon coupled with the sharpness of the weapon just invalidates the elemental aspect of the weapon. And some people realize that. They get such good results out of using an Elatrion weapon that they just use those. And I hate that. I also hate that they're actually well-placed to do so if they're focused on effectiveness versus effort put into being effective. I wish it weren't that way. It just has to do with the way they chose to balance the game. Or the way that they failed to balance the game. Depends on how you look at it. There was obviously a very similar issue in Monster Hunter Tri. So in Monster Hunter Tri, it was basically anything with purple sharpness automatically was much stronger than anything that didn't have purple sharpness. And the same can loosely be said of white sharpness in Portable Third. 
So Zenoga and Alatrium weapons do have that white sharpness. Alatrium weapons having quite a healthy amount of it, particularly if you have sharpness plus one. So it becomes a much stronger or a much more attractive option for people who want to deal high damage. So quite frankly, in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, you can just make one of those really uncreative loadouts. And probably the best example would be full Silver Rathalos and the Dark Claw Demise. And there you go, you've got a set that's going to destroy everything in the game with minimal effort. Um, that's obviously Capcom's fault for balancing the game in that way. I don't play the game that way. <laughs> For those of you who have watched me play Portable 3rd, I don't use Alatrion weapons very often in that game. I do use them, of course, but not with the sort of uh, frequency that other people do. What I don't understand about Portable 3rd is why they chose not to add any Alatrion weapons. So they, for any weapon type that did not exist in Try. They didn't create an Alatrium weapon for the missing weapon type in Portable 3rd, which was a shame. It wasn't until Generations Ultimate that they did that. And off the top of my head, I can't even think of it. No, actually, that's not true. In 3 Ultimate, they added the bow. So the Alatrion bow was added in 3 Ultimate, but it wasn't added in Portable 3rd. I found that to be a little bit strange. It felt like a, a cop-out. I suppose they just ran out of time. You never know. It's possible that Alatrion was an afterthought in that game. Maybe it wasn't originally intended for Alatrion to be in it. Maybe they were originally going for Akantor, Ukanlos, and Amatsu Magatsuchi, and then with Alatrion being in Monster Hunter Tri, they thought it was a shame to not include the monster in that game as well, so they just did it. Um, that is probably the most likely reason why they didn't actually create new weapon types for those, or new weapons for those weapon types that were not included in Try. Um, doesn't mean I agree with it, but it's a reasonable explanation as to why. So it was just the bow in 3 Ultimate, and then what was added for the... I think, I don't think there ever are Alatrion Dual Blades in 4th Gen. Are there? No. How about Hunting Horn? No, there's no Hunting Horn. Yeah, I suppose the same can be said of Generations Ultimate. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I'm just having a mental blank, but... Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm here at the head instead of the tail, but that's alright. There we go, got the tail off. It requires really <laughs> quite consistent attacks to get it off. Or to cut it off. And I just had a max potion stolen. Thank you. Thank you for that. Look, what I'd say, simply roam, is try not to be affected by what other people are using. Oh. Um. For some reason, Shinatsu abandoned the quest. Or did he actually disconnect? What are they doing? You can't... Oh, they're ending via subquest, perhaps. Is that what the subquest is? It is. Okay, well, they're ending via subquest, so I'll do the same. I actually, in my opinion, find that to be really unfortunate, but... Fine. If that's how they want to do it. I feel like we spent so much time cutting that tail, we may as well just... Go the whole way and kill the fucking monster, but... I'm not gonna solo the thing, so... Fine. But yeah, like I say, try not to be affected by what other people are using. Just play the game in the way that um, you want to play it. Believe me, it was much worse in Monster Hunter Try. <laughs> Portable 3rd, I see less of it there than I did in Monster Hunter Try. The end game of Monster Hunter Try, it was exclusively Double Joe and Alatrion weapons being used. Obviously, when I say exclusively, I don't actually mean exclusively, but I do mean predominantly. Like, it was just the main weapon of choice if you wanted to kill something quickly, so... Yeah. I could actually continue with these dual blades if I wanted to. Um, 
for the rest of this quest, and oh, sorry, for the rest of this recording, and to be honest, I should be doing this more often, um, I'm actually going to leave it in the hands of the chat to decide what weapon type I use. So, yeah, whatever you want me to use next, let me know, and I will equip that weapon type. I actually find it more fun. It's basically when I used to... It's similar to when I used to use that roulette. Not the joke weapon roulette. I used to also have a roulette for Generations Ultimate, and occasionally for when I played 3 Ultimate as well, where I would have the roulette decide what weapon type I would use. Um, this is actually better. This is more interactive, I think. Peaberry is not going to make a suggestion because he has already requested one. So if anyone else wants to request a weapon type for me to use, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just choose my own. Lance. Okay. So this is going to be dual Rathian. I might have an Awaken Lance option. Mm. I have two Awaken Lances at this stage. Well, I've got that as well. That looks like fun. I want to polish that. Seven Star Lance. Are those good stats? So let's compare that to the Immaculate Soul. 667380. Uh, although that is status, I must remember. It's not amazing, is it? I'm sure you could get better relics than that. I won't polish it. Alright, I might use Stygian Ida. There we are. A lot of my loadouts in this game use Honed Blade. The same can be said of this set. <laughs> so it's basically a lance set through and through with the best damage-based skill you can get in the game. So, it's attack up XL, sharpness plus one, guard plus two, guard boost, and then some additional affinity on top of that. Uh, <laughs> it's, in one sense, basic, but also the best possible lance set. <laughs> and someone's going to say, well, I use evade lance, so I disagree, which is fair. You know, if you use evade lance, this is not the best set, but, <laughs> you know, it's pretty good. In my opinion. It is within your gift, if you have a good Edge Master Talisman, to put Honed Blade on a lot of sets in this game. Because it is a skill that you can acquire fairly easily. Relative to 3 Ultimate, you can get it really easily in this game. Um, yes. So, I'm not sure why you ask the question, Rome, but yes, you can use Honed Blade with Seregios weapons. Seregios weapons just allow you to sharpen your weapon while you roll with them. Um, oh, unless... Oh, I see. Seregios weapons are probably at max sharpness. So in that case, only the Attack Up XL skill from Honed Blade is going to apply. Sorry, I'd forgotten that about Seregios weapons. I don't use them very often. Um, but yeah, if they do have maxed out sharpness, then yeah, sharpness plus one is not going to <clears throat> actually change that. Because it is literally maxed out. I don't use Seregios weapons very often in this game. But, well, in any game, to be honest. But the reason why is because I'm such an element file. And I like saying that. It sounds... Because <laughs> it makes you think of a vial, right? Element vial. And you're obviously... It is the... Uh, the English speaker's prerogative to choose to say file or vial depending on his preference. But, um, yeah, when I say element file, I'm referring to having a, an unhealthy and almost desperate attraction to element. Come on. I don't want to fight him down. Oh, it's her. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> she's even pink. Come on. Alright, fine. If you're going to go down there, then I suppose I have to. It's just, I feel like this is a, an awkward battleground. But I suppose it's awkward up there, too. 
<laughs> Will I still be playing the Minish Cap? The answer is yes, it's just... Uh, if I only have a limited amount of time in the week to record, I'm going to record the thing that will, you know, entertain hundreds of people versus what will entertain 20 people, you know? It's just what it is. If I were recording more frequently, yes, I'd be doing games like the Minish Cap, but I'm just not, so... For the moment, it's Monster Hunter. And then if it's not that, it's going to be Souls, because there's more of a crossover of interest between a Souls game and a Monster Hunter game. Rather than a Game Boy Advance, Zelda game, and Monster Hunter. Obviously not completely unrelated to one another. It's thanks to the Zelda series that a game like Monster Hunter exists at all. But, yeah. The interest doesn't quite cross over, I'm afraid to say. Keeping my shield raised. Oh, fuck. You know what I was expecting there, don't you? I was expecting her to fly down, so I was getting prepared to counter. I am stuck between this monster and the fucking wall. This is precisely why this battleground is horrendous. You see? Case in point for why it sucks to fight in a fucking crater like this. It's not literally a crater. I guess you could say, like, a concave space. No! But yeah, really awful. I misjudged what the monster was going to do there, so I was preparing to counter either her falling on top of me when she comes out of the air, or the wind pressure that is produced by her returning back to ground. What the fuck are you doing? What are you pinging for? I thought he was going to ping to fight the one in Area 2. I would have actually become irate. Come up here, please. I do not want to fight you down there. For reasons that hopefully are now very clear, but I'm sure they haven't learnt their lesson. Rathian's really struggling right now. I'm over here, lady. Um, Breath of the Wild is more likely to be recorded for than the Minish Camp. But... Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? You're leaving the area. Okay. What a waste of my time. Fortunately, all of the monsters are paintballed. I do appreciate that. Liberal use of paintballs automatically makes life easier. I don't actually have Psycho Serums in this game. They're not as easy to make here as they are in other games. Well, to start with, usually I just purchase them. I don't even make them in other games. I purchase a shitload of them from some vendor or another, but I, I can't do that here. And whatever is needed to combine for them in this game, and I can't remember what that is... Um, I don't have those materials in abundance either, so I just don't carry Psycho Serums in this game. I have them in almost every other game that I play in Monster Hunter, but not for Ultimate, and it's sad. Sometimes I really feel the misery of it. When you become reliant on that sort of convenience, you do notice when it's gone. And it is saddening. I hate that fucking attack. That attack that you just saw there is miserable. And I don't think I need to explain why. You know, the fact that I was standing right there and was still able to be hit by that attack, shows that it is an unfair attack. I was pretty much expecting to be hit, but praying that I wouldn't be. Obviously, my prayers were unhelpful. I always try to get one attack in before the mount actually begins. It tends to scare whoever is mounting. They, like, start pinging and going, Stop attacking! I know. I was trying to get one attack in before the mount begins. Nothing wrong with that. I'm maximizing my opportunities. Go away, Cephalos. What the fuck? Getting lots of attacks on the face here. Very important. And she did. She did. Oh, go away. You wide-headed irritant. No. You can see he's fixing to do something to interrupt our carving session. And he's done that very effectively with me. 
Seriously. You are achieving nothing except bothering us. I can assure you that at this stage, the Pink Rathian is a greater threat to you than we are. And we've just dispatched that threat. And now you want to play games with fate and increase the likelihood of your death by attacking us. Like, you are not the fucking objective here, Cephalos. Yeah, you're not going to be getting Monster Hunter World life hunts, that's not happening. Even as a joke, I balk at that. Yay. This Nahabra needs to fuck off. Have to get around to the head. Oh, she was not dropped before doing that. Despite my expectations. I suppose he was playing it safe. Get into position. Go away. Almost got me though. That I would describe that as an attempt at flash bombing. Not a good attempt, just an attempt. This needs to stop. I've explained this before, but the most annoying thing possible is when you've got a person in the room who can't flash bomb worth a fuck. Because what that translates to is you being permanently fucking blinded by flash bombs for no actual benefit. I can tolerate an occasional flashing of the screen if it's resulting in the fight becoming easier. But if you're missing all of them, fuck me sideways. I'm not putting up with it. Well, I suppose I am putting up with it. What am I going to do? Kick him from the room? <laughs> but yeah. No, not that I can, of course. Of course, it would be tempting to do it. If it were frequent enough. Oh, Jesus, she's having a bad day. Maybe she's got a broken leg and she keeps falling over every time she tries to stand on it. Hoping for that uh, lag compensation flinch there. Down to blue sharpness. Which is quite icky, as they say. That is the technical term for that. But I've got such a good opportunity to hit her here that I am persisting with my less than perfect sharpness level. Gone. It's very scary when she does that. It's a very large explosive attack. I like how we still haven't made use of this trap. Oh, very good positioning for that trap. That's excellent. You fuckwit. That could have been so clean. But of course, I wouldn't want to get in the way of you swinging your fucking weapon around, would I? That could have been a very, very clean capture. It's like, you know, you've carefully crafted a joke and then just as you reach the punchline, someone's like, Oh, that's funny! And then you're just standing there going, okay. That's what that was like. Oh. Hold on, let me just make sense of that. 
If it wasn't free to play, I wouldn't recommend it. Why do you choose such confusing ways to explain things? If it wasn't free to play, I would... Okay, so... In your opinion, it's not worth paying for. Okay. <sighs> A double negative to explain that is like... Anyway. But yeah, um, the long and short of it is that Potato is reporting to me, and to the chat, that there is an Ubisoft Call of Duty clone that is free to play. Good for them. Good for Ubisoft. It plays like the old Call of Duty games. <sighs> Difficult to fault that. There was a lovely simplicity in that. Oh, for fuck's sake, this quest again. Weapon type, anyone? Just throw a weapon type at me, whatever you want to see. Does it have um, full voice chat support? Because one of the things that I used to enjoy doing, and which I would be perfectly um, willing to do again now, is to just, you know, get in there with my microphone and just completely verbally dominate the people in there. Nice. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Bow. Okay. What do you mean somehow the lobbies are more tame than the old COD lobbies? Of course they are. You're not going to recreate that shit. Not in the modern era. No way. Man, just sitting in a lobby waiting for a match to start. The actual... Um, what would you even call it? Some of the arguments that would go on were just legendary. The kind of stuff where I wish I was recording for every single one of them and I just had just compiled an archive of it. Oh my god, just absolutely legendary, some of the arguments. Really good. Because you'd have a running commentary on it too, there'd be people who weren't involved going, Oh, and stuff like that, it was so good. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, okay. I need to actually choose a bow loadout. So, uh, yeah, let's do spread bow. What's my spread dragon loadout? Is a... Uh, I actually don't know what it is. Let's find out. What the fuck is that? Oh, that's Rapid Awaken. Um, it's not you. I know it's not you. L'innocent? Must be that. Okay. One of the funniest experiences... I, I, to be honest, I can think of so many funny experiences I had in Call of Duty, but... One of the funniest was um, when I went onto the PlayStation 3 bypass lobbies in, Mon in Modern Warfare 2. So basically, there was a way to bypass the patch, and you'd basically load into a version of Modern Warfare 2 that was the original patch, day one patch, or the original version unpatched, however you would refer to that. And that was sort of how you'd get, um, like, for example, all unlocks for your profile, things like that. You know, that you'd also be able to join these crazy lobbies where, you know, an actual fucking AC-130 would be flying at low altitude, <laughs> like, through 
through the map and just things like this. Just really crazy mods. And um, I joined and there was a guy who I didn't even play at this point. I just sat there and listened and laughed until the end of time. Or so it felt. While this guy on the microphone was making racing car noises. I actually recorded it. I've got it on my old iPhone 3GS somewhere. Um, basically, the guy was just sitting there going... <laughs> like, f f I'm talking, like, for 15 minutes, this guy was just adamantly pretending to be a racing car. And it was very funny. <laughs> Uh, it was it was absurd, but I mean, what kind of person would it take? But and of course, there was absolutely no reason for it. There's no fucking racing cars in the game. Um, I of course did neglect to bring coatings, but that's not exactly out of character for me now, is it? How about we actually use this trap this time? Well, God forbid we do that. We've got a guy here with an insect glaive. That would be an absurd proposition. Yeah, um, World at War was... World at War remains my favourite, to be honest. Like, you'd fucking finish... You'd finish a match and you're actually listening to a Hitler speech. Good times. You need to stop moving, actually. Female dragon. Oi! Fortunately, that was not pointed in my direction. If it had been, I probably would have been hit. Although, well, the range of that is not as strong as I was expecting. Like, the frontal range. It's more the, um, the sideways coverage of it that is concerning. <laughs> But yeah, this is one of the limited number of power shot bows that exist in the game. Pretty fun to use. Feels very Generations Ultimate. I don't need them to feel like I'm being effective, but when I do have them, I feel pretty effective. Still haven't made use of this trap, of course. I'm not surprised. Again, it's the, it's because the momentum of the trap being placed is immediately decimated by this fucking insect glaive guy. And then we forget about it, and I include myself in that. Got a tail cut during the trap, but the timing of it was favourable. There's nothing more annoying than putting a monster in the trap and then immediately getting a tail cut, or... Paralyzing a monster and then immediately getting a tail cut. It's extremely annoying. I don't remember Simply Rome. I didn't really play the campaigns as much. That's not where the fun was. Quite frankly, unless you're playing the first Call of Duty or Call of Duty 2 or Call of Duty Finest Hour, like, you've just got no business playing the fucking, the fucking campaign, in my opinion. But Remember Finest Hour? God. 
Call of Duty Finest Hour. What a fucking... That was the finest... No, I'm joking. It wasn't that amazing of a game, but... Not much love for Finest Hour anymore. It was on GameCube, believe it or not. Call of Duty Finest Hour on GameCube. A very underrated Call of Duty these days is Call of Duty 3. Um, it was Xbox exclusive. I really wanted to play it, but I didn't. obviously didn't have an Xbox back then. Didn't even have a PlayStation 3 back then. Um, but yeah, it was actually the first quickscoping game. Obviously the first game to really um, have quickscoping take off was COD 4, Modern Warfare. But uh, Call of Duty 3 really was the first quickscoping game. Very satisfying to do it in that game, just from having watched it be done back in those days, but... Um, yeah, you could also use tanks in that game. That was the first tank game, from my recollections. You could, of course, use them in COD 5. But, yeah, it, really unfortunate that they decided that COD 3 had to be Xbox 360 exclusive. Stupid idea. We are on to the next Rathian. Rathian number two. <laughs> I just, as soon as I see that fucking green clown go off, and then I see him get annihilated by a Rathian tail, if he, okay, he didn't die, but I could smell, I could smell death upon him. He was marked for death. Um, that was just really funny. When you see that green cloud go off and instead of him disappearing, he just gets smacked in the face by a Rathian tail. It's funny stuff. Comedy is how I would describe that. Oh. You know, this guy, every single time he gets a mount off successfully, this Chaozu guy needs to wake up and fucking realize what's going on. Because there was a mount actually going on. I think he was so bent on revenge in that moment. That he just, he saw red and became me attack monster. He went into, I suppose what you'd call, unga bunga mode. Me hit monster. Um, but anyway. Get the fuck away. Um, but yeah, I was, believe it or not, a prolific Call of Duty quickscoper in the old days. Um, I shouldn't say old days, I didn't start in COD 4, I started quickscoping in Modern Warfare 2, but at more or less the start of Modern Warfare 2. Um, I wasn't good at first, but I spent about four months only using the Intervention and the Barret, nothing else. Which I hated at first, it was miserable. But then... Eventually, I had developed the skill to quickscope long range. Because, you know, when that's your only fucking choice, you do become pretty good at using those weapons. And so, yeah, I was a pretty good quickscoper in those days. Oh. And then there was the trick shotting as well. Which I was never really good at, but I was, you know, able to do all the tricks, all the different ones. The best was, oh, what was the best one? What was that called? That was towards the end of trick shotting, actually. Where you would use the ladder in, oh, what the fuck was it called? I can't remember the map names anymore. Anyway, there was a, don't worry, I can't remember anymore. Can't remember the name of the trick shot, can't remember the map. But you basically used a ladder and you would um 
you would progressively jump on and off the ladder while descending it whilst doing tricks and then you'd finish ideally with a silent shot but yeah obviously you didn't always get the silent shot had to have that perfect timing with the throwing knot but then obviously the tr the whole trick shotting thing descended into absolute um foolishness when literally people were setting up trick shots right <laughs> you'd you'd get to the uh you'd get to last in search and destroy and then someone would just obediently stand there <laughs> it was the fucking and and then hilariously um whenever someone wouldn't set up it was you'd just get a full team of moaning people like oh set up bro set up i mean that was um that's the australian community i don't know about other communities but <laughs> oh it was funny no it wasn't high rise it wasn't that ladder anyway whoa doom link meet and greet well, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, if you've gone to the trouble of coming to Sydney, I'm sure we can go for a coffee or something. All right. No, it wasn't rust. It was the, um... Hmm. What was one of the defining factors? It was, uh... Sorry, I'm thinking of a defining characteristic of the map so that I can remember what it was. Why didn't it... I suppose it has been a long time. Any information that I don't access in my mind for a long time eventually just gets pushed away. <laughs> um... Hmm. Oh. It's not that important. It's just, yeah. I'm not very tall. I'm 5'11". In some countries, that would be very tall. Um, I'm just average height. By most Western standards. And by, I don't know, Balkan standards, I'd be a midget. But yes, in an Asian country, I would be considered tall. Thanks for hunting, says Babidi. We have now reached the point where I may go looking for another room. This is, as I mentioned at the start of the live stream, my opportunity to... Well, actually, what I might do... Because I do need to go to the bathroom. It's probably a bad idea to go AFK as soon as I join a room. So, what I'll do is I'll take care of that and then we'll see what other options there are. If there is the choice of actually joining a three ultimate session, I will do that. If there isn't, then I'll try to find a room in four ultimate. I'll be back in a moment.
I'm back. Sorry for the bumping. Just trying to position things correctly. Alright, let's see what... ...options we actually have. Ironically, I'm still sitting in that room. Alright. I will refresh my list and I will go through. Again, I haven't really set up the capture in order to be able to show you the rooms that I'm going through here. There is an option to join 3 Ultimate, so let's give it a try. One of the good things about 3 Ultimate, and I don't know if I've, just, I've actually demonstrated this yet, but I can. Let me... Okay, here we go. One of the good things about 3 Ultimate is that I can actually check the rank of all the people, or the ranks of all the people in the room, before I join it. So it, I guess it speeds things up. If I am dealing with people who are low rank or even high rank, I can find out before actually joining. Alright, what do we got? They are G rank, how about that? Very good. Oh, what, you, what the fuck is that? Help. I want to join them, please. That's very odd. Okay. I'm not even sure what that function was, but let's go to friend search and actually join that room. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have the lower screen visible, so you wouldn't have been able to see what I was doing there. But I have greeted them, and here we are in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. As you can probably already tell, we have halved the frame rate. I do ask for your forbearance. It is not something that I can control. This game cannot run at 60 FPS. Mm, yeah, Moxie will do. They seem to be on a quest at the moment. Again, I just cannot believe that they didn't implement a way for me to be able to see the quest that they're on while they've departed on it. I've admitted it before and I'll admit it again, I don't remember how they did it in Try. It's just one of those little details that I have not filed away in my memory. But I think you can see quests in progress in Try, I'm pretty sure you can. I've been very fortunate in that I haven't been forced to wait very long. So that's a good thing. They are speaking in the Spanish language. This may be a problem. Because it's probably a group of three friends and they're probably not very concerned as to whether I join them or not. So hopefully they will be courteous and not depart without me if the opportunity is presented to them to do so. We'll find out, <laughs> I suppose. Um, I can cross my fingers. I know it sounds like I'm being paranoid, but it's happened, I think, even on camera in the emulated version of 3 Ultimate. If not on camera, then it's definitely happened to me, I think, twice already since I started emulating 3 Ultimate. It's ridiculous, but possibly three times. There's two times that I can remember immediately, and I think there might have been a third occasion where it happened, but whatever. I'll have to be very quick. <laughs> or maybe they will actually respect the fact that I'm a higher hunter and can actually want my help. Who knows? I don't require that. All I need is decency. I don't need people to, you know... Defer to my higher huntering. I'm not in need of deference. I'm in need of basic decency. <laughs> That's what I'm in need of. Just to make it very clear.
Sadly, don't have much alcohol actually. I've only got that much ginger wine. So I'm using my little port glass for it. Just to try and savour it, I suppose. Cheers. Oh. That's really quite nice after having a coffee. I shouldn't say a coffee, that's... I'm not even going to get into why I don't want to say that. Makes it sound like I've had my daily cup of coffee. I ended up explaining it anyway. <laughs> Rathian Rosa Kazam Kazamos? Well, Rathian Rosa, I think. <laughs> Should make that very clear as to what they are wanting to fight. We've also been given Plesioth Verde. Wonder what that is. We've also got Kurepeko Kazamos. What am I talking about? I'm talking about their discussion in the chat. We've had three fucking monsters that have been posed as possible monsters to fight. And they still haven't posted anything. The point is I'm trying to... I want to preempt their selection. Thus ensuring that they don't depart without me. These guys, I'm almost certain, are not going to need to set up at all. So I have to be really quick. Yeah, Port Tansy is really cool. It looks especially attractive when all the bloom has been removed here. Ironically, here I am emulating the 3DS version, and in many ways it's going to look better than the Wii U version ever did when I was recording that. Because you don't have the colours just absolutely screaming in your face anymore. They're a bit more muted, but they're also rich. So, yeah, the elimination of bloom really allows this place to pop. I'm sure they, that they thought that by adding Bloom, it created that pop. It fucking doesn't. It just looks like... turd on a stick. Okay? It feels so wrong having a liquid of this colour in this glass. It's invariably a red liquid that I put in this glass. Those of you who have been watching my live streams for the last five years will be able to attest to that. I've never poured anything other than port in this glass. Well, it's the first time for everything. I usually use a different glass, um, but that one's still packed away. I still haven't found a good glass cabinet. I'm, I've been on the lookout, haven't found one yet. So a lot of my drinking receptacles remain in storage, annoyingly. But life goes on. Okay, what have we got? What have we got? It is Baroth. I'll be as quick as I can. I cannot make a promise beyond that. Fortunately, one of them has to eat, so that's going to delay them a little bit. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I do actually have to be as quick as I can be. What am I going to use? Um, let's just go with Longsword, that's fine. Fire Longsword. Do I have an Awaken Fire Longsword? I think I do. Let's do that. Um, oh, 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 awaken this set, yep. And then... Awaken Longsword, whatever that's going to be. Fire. Chrome Waltz. There we go. I don't know what that means. In fact, I'm going to translate it because I have been mentioned by name. So we'll find out. It prompted an XD from someone, so it may not be positive in any way. Let's find out what they are saying about me in the chat. Come on. Translate to English. Not Italian. Espanol. It says, uh, well, it's been translated to Draculestia must have been stunned. Uh... By what, I don't know. By how long it took for them to get ready, I don't know. But, uh, at least it wasn't a vocalized intention. Well, it's hard to say vocalized when 
It's written, but you know what I mean. I, I guess I should just say a written intention to depart without me. That's a good thing. <laughs> I'm pleased by that, at least. Ugh. So I am using a longsword that, quite frankly, you have no business using. Unless you have Awaken. Because it's shit, okay? Um, but if you just want a bit of fun, and you've got Awaken, and you're fighting something that's weak to fire, go for it. It works well enough. It's obviously got that tuning fork look to it. I know it's going to look like it's low res, not low res, um, low FPS, but you will get used to it. You will adjust, I can assure you. Because I do. So you can too. Let's work together. It's just that side-by-side -side comparison that makes it difficult. Oh, lovely. I perfectly fade-slashed into a mud ball. Just what I like. Oh, I'd best heal up. Make sure everything looks and sounds fine. Yep, that's all good. I'm not going to engage him over there. And you can see why I haven't done that. It's because they both got kicked out of the area. <laughs> I fought this monster in this area enough to know that, and to know by now not to do that. I think I'm going to miss my... Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't going to get that off. Annoyingly. Annoyingly. My high grade earplugs was about to come in handy though. Didn't need it in the end. I think one of them is complaining about the Baroth lagging. I'm not getting that. Certainly unrelated to my presence in the room. I'm neither the host of the quest nor the host of the monster in the area. So, well, I suppose I'm neither the quest host nor the person who made the room. At this stage, I'm still unsure as to how the host is determined. Because you see, the red player is always going to be the person who... So, okay. It's not in order of who joined the quest in this game. Actually, no, that's probably not true. That would have been the Wii U version, I think. That's fine. I'm going to completely backtrack on everything that just came out of my mouth and just say, I don't know. I don't know how the host is determined. I'm going to assume that for the 3DS version, it's determined by the person who posted the quest. I could be wrong. That's not how it was for the Wii U version, I don't think, but... I don't know. I'm sure the knowledge is in someone's hands, it's not in mine. Not in my hands. Notice that I still have yet to reach the white level. I now have reached it, but only took like three minutes of engaging the monster to get it done. Quite unbelievably. Very good. There's an opportunity. As you can see, the <laughs> the effect on the longsword meter is really pixelated. Not everything has been made HD, I'm sorry to say, but it gives you at least some guidance as to how fucking ugly the 3DS version is without graphical mods. The things that haven't been modified are very obvious. Um, at this stage you can see that the sharpness meter, the longsword meter, and the item selection sections have been unmodified. Unsurprisingly, they look like bunkum. So, there you have it. I've said it before and I'll say it again, and I say it without reservation, that the 3DS version of this game looks like complete shit. I think it's one of the ugliest Monster Hunters ever to be put on a fucking cartridge or a disc. Let's say physical media. It is one of the ugliest Monster Hunters ever to be put on physical media. It looks like shit. So, yeah. 
what I am playing here is somewhat modified visually. Oh, now I'm getting some lag. <laughs> Holy shit. Hopefully that... Maybe it is determined by who enters the area first. It must be, hey. Whoa! Okay, it's determined by who enters the area first. This is one of the very rare occasions where a monster in a stationary position is actually moving. So, you know, when a monster falls on the ground, they're not moving around, okay? But apparently if your connection is bad enough, they can still fucking slide into different positions. That's shocking. Whoever entered this area first needs to not repeat that. They really need to not do that again. Oh my god. So yeah, it has now officially been determined that the first person to enter the area is indeed going to be the person who hosts it, much like the PSP Monster Hunter games. Well, the PSP Monster Hunter games except Portable 3rd. Fucking awful. Truly, truly terrible. Pretty sure whoever produced the lag before is not the person hosting this time around, and thank God for uh, for that. Um, so I was personally assured of the fact that I wasn't hosting last time, <clears throat> because there were already people engaging the monster, you see. So there was no chance of me having hosted last time, even though they were complaining about lag. We need to try and narrow down who the bad host is. It's just, I don't think I can really have that conversation with these guys. They might not speak English, and even if they do, they might not speak it very well. So when I explain to them that the host is determined by whoever engages the monster first out of the group, that may not be something they can comprehend, <laughs> okay? So I'm not going to have that conversation with them. But yeah. Um, that's usually how you do it. You find the person with the shit connection and tell them, do not enter the area until someone else has already begun engaging the monster. Because if you do it, that means everyone has to suffer your fucking lag while you just sit there and enjoy a nice, clean, connecting hunt. You know, the point is you prioritize based on majority. You know, who's going to... How many more people are going to benefit from not having you host versus having you host? It's just... It's quite obvious that... Uh, it's better for one guy to lag than for three people to lag. Bueno, no consegui nada de lo que... Sorry, de lo que... Que quería. Bueno, no consegui... Nada de lo que queria. That's probably que queria. I don't fucking know, do I? Do I look Spanish to you? <laughs> my point... <laughs> I think I've made my point very clearly. That uh, I don't speak that language. I can attempt to, though. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm seeing bichos. Is that... Bichos eléctricos. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do still have that glass. Yeah, that's my West Vletheran 12 glass. Still considered to be the best beer ever produced in the world. Um, my glass for that beer was indeed... Well, the shipment of it was delayed because the guy had a terrible accident, which caused him to be in hospital. I think I got it maybe six to eight months after I ordered it. <laughs> um, yeah, he disappeared. Um, and you know when someone disappears online and you jokingly say um, that that person has died? Well, apparently the extent of the accident that this guy had, or the severity of the accident that this guy had, made him appreciate being alive. So, <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to ask for details, but that makes it pretty clear it was very serious. Also, the, the length of time that he spent away from his responsibilities as an eBay seller made it very clear that uh, it was serious. I have done Peaberry. Yeah. I have done. I've used that glass on camera before and I'm pretty sure I would have dedicated that drink to that guy. I'm sure I would have done so. What's important though is that he's okay. Or at least not dead. <laughs> Which is always good. 
But do you know what? Um, I'm glad that I approached it in the, white, in the right way. I'm sure that that guy would have received abusive and aggressive emails as a result of not um, upholding his end of the bargain in the sale. I'm sure a number of his things would have been refunded. I'm sure all sorts of things would have happened. I was not one of those people. I never sent him an angry message or anything like that, which I'm sure he probably appreciated. I had a sense that something had gone wrong, and so I just left it alone. I think I followed up twice and then I left it alone. Always keeping it in the back of my mind, but not, not pushing the issue. And eventually he did come back. So... Hello, Mr. Madness. The hunts are going well. You will notice that it says that I'm playing for ultimate. Just keep in mind, if I am playing for ultimate, there's no guarantee I'm going to only play that game. It may also be three ultimate, which is indeed the case this time. Hmm. What should I use here? Probably raw or status. What would be a fun choice? I'll bring a hammer. Something that's... Well, do you know what? Just to do something a little different, I will use the Brachydeos Hammer. Now, for many people, that wouldn't be an example of something different, but it is for me. I don't use this weapon very often. I've probably used it on camera once ever, and I've been recording this game since 2015, so... Well, technically since 2013, but... As far as what's on YouTube since 2015, yes. <laughs> okay. Indeed. Welcome back, Madness. Alright, so I think we're going to be starting with Giganox, because Baryoth should be in Area 6, off to the side. Oh. Yep, so... Giganox is here. Ow. Look at that fucking paintballing action. It's like, like I say, throwing a paintball in this game is like throwing a goddamn paintball. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> I got a bit distracted. These guys want to fight Barry off first for some reason. Why? I don't understand. But if that's what you want to do, fine. Um, sorry, what I meant to say was that throwing a paintball is like throwing a throwing knife. So, there you have it. Maybe it's because Barry off naturally rotates to the area where Giganox starts. So maybe starting with Barry off is ideal to avoid fighting two monsters at the same time. Because, of course, um, Giganox does not fly to this area, ever. Oh, that's not ideal. I was hoping for a bit of a better opportunity to hit the head than that. But I guess I was a little bit late in taking advantage of that. <laughs> fucking off target there on my part. That attack, the range of it is unreasonable in my opinion. It's almost comparable to the Plesioth hip check. It's got a greater range than it looks like it should, is what I would say. But they do a better job of visualizing it, I think. Compared, of course, to the Plesioth hip check of Freedom Unite. And I do say Freedom Unite specifically, it was only Freedom 2 and Freedom Unite where that hip check was broken. The other games were fine. And I do also mean the ones that precede, or predate, Freedom 2. Not just the ones, like, for example, this game, where you can fight Plesioth without the hip check. Oh, 
Barioth is one of those monsters where I think I am willing to carve at this stage. I'm reaching the point, very uncharacteristically, of just not carving some G rank monsters because I know that I've basically maxed out my uh, material stacks for that monster. So. Or for the G rank monsters. Pretty sure I start at purple, don't I? No, I don't. Okay, well. Sharpening up for good measure, I suppose. Sadly, I have rock steady with this set, not high grade earplugs. Very annoying. I shall patiently wait for you to stop doing that. As a hammer user, I can't really engage with you when you're doing that. I should mention that... Um, I guess I'm willing to say a friend of mine. He's more like a, an acquaintance that I've played with a little bit. Not a close friend or anything like that. But his name's Florin. Um... If you check him out on YouTube, he has some very, very good gameplay recorded of both For Ultimate and Free to Be Nine. Um, he wants to play on camera in this series with me, but it's very difficult to actually align our time zones. Very difficult. But yeah, at some point I will play For Ultimate with him. We'll start off with just the two of us, and then if people want to join, they can do. But yeah. F L A U R E N is his name. I think he's been on camera before, just not recently. Um, I don't think he plays 3 Ultimate, but he does play 4 Ultimate. I was just reminded of it because um, he is very good at using hammer. He's one of those, uh, I would call his style of play predictive hunting. So you familiarize yourself with the movements of the monster enough to begin an attack before the monster has actually started doing the thing that you're intending to counter or take advantage of. So it requires a certain level of familiarization with the movements of the monster. And, um, yeah, it's really good stuff. It doesn't just require a very well-established understanding of how the monster moves, it also requires the understanding of the exact amount of time it takes to perform a certain attack with your weapon. Like, for example, the timing of a golf swing, or how long it takes to perform a golf swing out of a spinning attack with the hammer to then align that with an attack that the monster is performing which came out after you had begun setting up the attack, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, yeah, it's a high risk, high reward, but usually if you're good enough at it and specific enough, or I suppose consistent enough, you can deal a lot of damage without being touched by the monster for the most part. And that's how he plays. It's a very thorough and adroit way of playing the game. Kind of the opposite of casual play. Which is what I champion. <laughs> but oh well. Oh, we're going for the capture. But yeah, I'll play with Florin at some point. It'll probably require me to do it after after work at some point. In the evening. In my time zone. But quite late, actually. Like, we're talking around midnight sort of thing. Which is okay, it's just sort of... It's not how I do it these days. I try to record in the mornings.
All right. It was nice to use this hammer for a change. You can see that the design of it is very cool. Even if you yourself are not a huge fan of how strong slime is in this game, you can't really deny that the Brachydeus weapons look very, very cool. Anything that I don't take, obviously, is stuff that I already have maximum amounts of. You just can't see it because it's being shown on the bottom screen how much of it I have in my box. Yes, it is the Australian curse. Mm. I think all of these are max. No. I'm just going to discard these. I've decided that Barrioth is going to be one of those monsters as well that I will not carve. No, oh, no. No, I've never crafted all weapons in a Monster Hunter game. It doesn't really... I, I mean, maybe Monster Hunter Try? But I don't remember ever reaching a point in Monster Hunter Try where I sat down and definitively said, that's it, I've made every weapon. But in Monster Hunter Try, I basically made every weapon in my original save, because it just sort of happens automatically. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking to have more variety in that game, you end up forging practically all of them, but... I probably had all of them forged except for, you know, maybe f three to five, something like that. It was basically all of the weapons that I had forged in Tri, but with Tri being the exception, almost any Monster Hunter game where you choose to forge all weapons, it's going to take a very long time to do that. Can't underestimate how much time that would take. I have sadly forgotten what was put on the board, so I will use something random. Not literally random, but I'll try to... I don't know. Use something that can work regardless of what hunt I'm doing. Let's bring Lance and I'll do... I don't know. I guess we'll do... Well, even though this is very good as a raw weapon, I just can't use it as a raw weapon. I have to use it Awaken with Slime. There's just no option. Um, Dubez Asterism. Well, actually, this is a set, I think, that doesn't have sharpness plus one. So, yeah, why not? Okay. Why not? El brachidios que mate... Que mate que... Me dio... Que ma... Fucking, I can't read that shit. I don't know why I keep trying to, actually. I think because you would find it mildly entertaining. That must be the reason why. There was actually a guy that I knew of, played with him occasionally. His name was Leo. Um, he had decided to try and craft all weapons in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. Now... He did stop shy of achieving that goal, <laughs> because he burnt himself out really terribly in that game, unsurprisingly. But he did forge a staggering number of weapons in that game by the time he stopped playing it. So, yeah. Well, Potato, that sounds like severe and debilitating mental dysfunction. And I'm sorry to hear that you had to have a conversation with someone like that, or to receive a message from someone like that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Clearly they are... well, I don't know what they're doing. They can do what they want. I'm going to paintball this one, and then I'll see which one they want to fight. Whatever they choose is what I will accept. But yes, we are doing double Brachydeus. I had forgotten what we were doing. 
before I set up for the quest, but so be it. Oh. <laughs> that was good. I get hit from the front by the fist, and then the tail hits me from behind. That's quite beautiful. You need very specific positioning in order to take that attack, but whatever. Um, okay. They have decided that they are going to fight that one. Technically, it makes sense for them to do that, because that one is easiest for them to reach from where they started. They both started at camp, so... I will move on to where they are. <coughs> Oh god. Well, that guy's had to throw in the towel. Jesus, who's fucking ho hosting this one? Look at this! Who has the terrible connection here? There is a person who has intolerably poor connectivity. And I think they are currently hosting this monster. Well, it does have to be said that it's rather fashionable to, or visually speaking, rather fashionable to use a Lucent Nagakuga weapon in conjunction with a Glacial Agnactor armor set. Basically the same coloration. Look at that. It is pretty much identical. <laughs> Leave me alone, man. <laughs> Almost about to get a second death. Come on, man. Getting out of the way of these Switch Axe Wonder Boys. There's that tail again. I find myself bedeviled by the presence of this tail, which just keeps swinging like a mace into my openings as a lance user. It's terrible. It's like Brachydios has been expertly crafted to shit on lance users or something. Probably not that far from the truth. I don't really use Lance against Brachydeos very often. Probably clear, based on how I'm reacting to it. As if I've never done it before. <laughs> yeah, if you're a Lance user and you're having to contend with two people swinging switch axes around, it's sad. It's hard enough with almost any weapon type, to be honest. When you're a Lance user, dealing with whatever they're doing, but a switch axe user? Yeah. Truly unpleasant, is how I would describe it. Ow. <laughs> what you doing? Come on. Stop walking around in a circle. It's not achieving anything, I can assure you of that. Well, no, that's not true. It's achieving the increased frustration that is building within me as I continue to fight you, but other than that, it's really not doing anything. Yeah, I think the Brachydeos theme is quite good. It's very orchestral, isn't it?
do your worst. I just need to patiently wait for you to finish whatever the hell it is you think you're doing. Mr. Brachydeus? There we go. Should be getting a limp soon. Hopefully. Can we all agree that this particular confrontation with this particular Brachydeus feels like it's gone on for a bit too long? We've broken a number of things, and he's one of two monsters. I... Admittedly, I haven't checked the weapons that these people are using. How do we not have a limp here? I'd actually recommend a capture attempt here. Oh, fuck you. Like, you're hitting away the actual damage dealers so that you can super pound with your stupid base. Whatever you'd call that. Double base, I don't know. What are you pinging for? What are you actually playing at? And why are you going in that direction? You felt it necessary to signal twice to then go in the wrong direction. So, some kind of explanation wouldn't be helpful, but I don't think I'm going to get it. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, I'm not going to hold it against this guy. I feel like both of those flash bombs should have worked, but they didn't. They really didn't. And it's funny that they didn't. Who fucking joined this area first? I think it was Desnan. I think it was. God, this this guy's fucking persona non grata in my opinion. He needs to be excluded from the group for having such shit connection. Speaking of um, persona non grata, get out of here. What is he doing? Is he accidentally signaling? Is that what's going on? Or is he actually communicating in some way that he thinks is meaningful, but in reality is not? Can you believe that this one has almost full health? I can't. I feel like we've been in this quest for ages. Did you see what just happened? So, I moved to counter the roar. I instead countered Desnan and then was immediately super pounded by Desnan after having countered him. So that was uh, quite delightful. I'll tell you what's not fucking delightful. The connection with this monster right now. If Juby signals one more time, I'm going to fly to his goddamn country and strangle him with my controller cable. Seriously. I think he was signalling for a life powder there. God knows why he was signalling on those other occasions. Maybe it was accidental, I don't know. But circumstantially, it appeared that he was pinging for a life powder. I'd say if he spent less time signalling inanely and more time playing the goddamn game, he wouldn't need to signal for a life powder to be used for his benefit. <laughs> the thing with um, signalling for a life powder is it's funny in two ways so to start with you're in quite a compromising situation and instead of trying to keep yourself out of trouble you're taking the time to signal instead and then second of all it's it reflects a certain entitlement it's like you are entitled to assistance in this moment you're not entitled to anything <laughs> but i don't know maybe that's a cynical way of looking at it but to me it is a bit entitled to signal for a uh, for a life powder because it comes across more like a demand than anything else, doesn't it? 
Like, we haven't fucking noticed that you're low health. I mean, how do you not notice when a teammate has hit low health? It's just, it's kind of natural when you see someone get annihilated for your eyes to briefly glance in the direction of the health bars, isn't it? It's just how you play in multiplayer, so... The signalling is not to draw attention to the fact that you're at low health, it's to practically demand assistance. But again, could just be my cynicism talking. It could be argued that it would benefit me as well as him to heal him out of a dangerous situation. But, anyway. Thank you for that fucking upswing. Ugh. I am slimed, I have to proceed with caution, although it's difficult to do that when I am on my hands and knees, courtesy of a completely pointless attack on the part of Juby, which had absolutely zero chance of hitting the monster in that moment anyway. Desnan's getting falcon punched. Much to my mild amusement. Thank you. I'll tell you what, if you want motion sickness, read this, um, this Caleb guy's name while he's running. And grin. Whose trap's gonna get used? It looks like it's gonna be the pitfall trap. I wasn't gonna use two tranks then. Okay. We did eventually complete the quest. Obviously, we didn't hit the 15 minute mark, so I was being a little bit dramatic when describing how long it was taking to complete the quest, but I don't know. Maybe it's because I've done this quest so many times, it just feels like it takes forever because it's so terribly boring at this point for me. Kaled is doing a perfect visual demonstration of an attack that you shouldn't be doing with the switch axe. I'm sure that's his intention. Can give this guy a little surprise. Of course, on my screen I hit him, but his connection to us is so remarkably terrible that on his screen he was not hit by my attack. Alright, catch you later, Peaberry. Thanks for joining. Just taking whatever I can take. Well, that will do. Oh, do you suppose they're doing their urgent quests? That's probably what's going on, isn't it? I had totally forgotten that that's what would be happening, but... I think part of the reason why is because, for some reason, I keep thinking that Sticky Situation is the urgent into HR6 rather than the urgent into HR7. But that, of course, is not the case, because... Brachydeus is a Tier 2 monster. Indeed, the urgent into G rank in this game is Goldbeard C. Davis. Okay, so that was Jubees. I was calling him Jube or Jube, something like that. I'd say Juby at this point. What the fuck? I guess he's connecting to the offline mode. I hope so. Because that would be quite funny if he just completed his urgent quest and then left. But, uh... Yeah. 
He's HR7 now, so that was his urgent quest. Yeah, he's gone. He fucking did his urgent and he's out. I can't read their conversation, so I can't know for sure <laughs> how that has played out, but that's what it looks like. He got his urgent done and now he's finished. Unironically, I am reading Que Paso in the chat. Unironically. Alright. What's been put on the board? If it's sticky situ- uh, uh, uh. Why? Why must I be subjected to this? What should I bring? Do you know what's really annoying about this? If I'm correct that Desnan is actually the person with the shit connection, the loss of Juby actually has raised the likelihood of me having to endure this shit connection with the monster. Is it Desnan? Or could I have been mistaken? Because I remember it was the, the one that they chose to hunt that I went and joined and saw that the connection was terrible. But Desnan died at that point. So did the connection improve after he died, or...? I don't remember. I don't think it did, so maybe it wasn't Desmond with the bad connection. It was after we had killed one and then fought the one that remained, where I saw that the connection was shit and thought that Desmond was the first one to engage. So I could be wrong, just in general, about who has the terrible connection. If we do this, I need to bring something that deals high damage. So... <laughs> what would be a good choice? Pierce Heavy Bowgun, maybe? Let's do it. I think if I bring Pierce Heavy Bowgun, it will... Reduce the length of time that this takes. It'll probably end up being about the same as the last hunt we did. That's my expectation. I'll bring combination materials for Pierce Level 1. I think that will be necessary. Let me see what I've got. I'm going to put away this elemental shit so that I don't have to look at it. Probably sounds a bit weird when I put it that way, but it's true. just helps to not have it there for me. Alright, so I'm going to bring combination materials for Pierce 1 and Pierce 2. I'm not going to explain why I'm not bringing combination materials for Pierce level 2. Did I say Pierce... Ugh, whatever. Pierce level 3 and Pierce level 1. I'm not bringing them for Pierce level 2. I'm not going to explain why. You can figure it out if you see what is used com to combine for it. Um, let me... Get my wyvern claws. Bird wyvern fangs, that's what it is. Whatever they are. Bird wyvern fang. Oh, I do not have as many huskberries as I can carry, so... I will actually purchase them. I made the executive decision. That sounded like I used a T instead of a D. I made the executive decision to not store huskberries in the box because there's no point. It's taking up unnecessary space in my box when I can just purchase them from that vendor that I just bought them from there. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Of course, I do need to make sure that I have all of my peer shots in my inventory as we speak, which I do not. I'm glad that I double-checked that. I actually want to see what this guy has said regarding Juby. Just to see if Juby left on good terms or not, because as I say, I can't actually know based on my understanding of this interaction thus far whether... He did leave on good terms, so let's find out. If you default to Italian again, I'm going to shit. Alright. He says, this reminds me of the old Juby. So I guess he hasn't left in uh, good standing. I'm just going to translate a few more lines from this conversation. Yeah, it looks like that's what's happened. So he finished his urgent but didn't want to continue helping them afterwards. Let's let's see what... Again, just translating a few more lines. That's not even... 
that must be colloquial or some kind of dialect that's not supported. Um, well, whatever. That's a shame. For them, I guess. What the f- oh, oh, okay, they've decided to not- oh. Yeah. So that's funny. Um, I just... Translated the line, let's leave it for tomorrow. And then, as a result, the room has been closed. <laughs> Which is annoying. Um, Ethan, I'm actually going to end the live stream now. I am two and a half hours in. I've just lost this team that I'm playing three ultimate with, so I'm going to finish up now. I'm sorry that you've joined at this time. Peaberry's already gone to bed, by the way. Uh, so yeah, I will finish up for now. And um, I do thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time I'm recording 3DS Monster Hunter games. I would like for Double Cross to be included in that list of games that I'm playing, but that is not the case. I have gone into that before, but it may not be that way forever. We'll see how things go. For the moment, when I play 3DS Monster Hunter, that will involve both 4 Ultimate and 3 Ultimate. I was able to play both of those games in this recording today. I will see you all next time I'm playing Monster Hunter or anything else that you'd like to watch. And I bid you all farewell for now. Bye-bye.